Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me today. I've got a new painting which I'm gonna share with you right behind me in real time today from start to finish, no fast forwarding. This is the longest video I think that I've done so far. So a lot of you have asked for it. I'm gonna start doing a few more of these I think. But anyways, this scene is inspired by a local place you can drive to, kind of a mountain lake with a cool uh, backdrop. So I'm gonna use that inspiration and paint this scene. Let's get started. All right, guys, so what I've got going here today is a 12 by 16 inch canvas panel that I made myself. I took rolled canvas, glued it to a piece of hardboard, and uh, I've got, it's a, kind of a finer woven pre-gessoed canvas, just a nice canvas. And I've also got uh, my usual colors here. I've got, uh, I'm going back to more black, it seems like lately. So I've got carbon black, titanium white, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and then phthalo blue. And I've got all of my materials, the brushes, the canvas, everything that I'm gonna be using today in the description below. So check that out if you're interested in what I'm using. Okay, now the first thing that I wanna do is basically just get a pencil sketch on canvas, a really light pencil sketch. So I'm just gonna take this number two mechanical pencil get my T-ruler up here. And I'm just gonna figure out what I'm gonna be drawing here, what I'm gonna be painting. A lot of people are probably saying, Chuck, it's a T-square. All right, get a quick sketch going here and then we'll move to the paint. Let it dry, we'll get to it. All right, this is dry and uh, I'm gonna have to apologize because I just pre-mixed some colors here and I thought my palette cam was on, but it wasn't. So I've got some colors mixed already. Really simple what I just did here though. I just mixed the kind of the four major colors we're gonna create the painting with, uh, my, plus or minus a few things. But what I basically did over here on the left is I took white, ultramarine blue, and some phthalo blue, mix that together. I added a touch of black just to dull that, neutralize that down a little bit. So we've got both kinds of blue and some white, just a light color blue right here. For this color in the middle, basically just took a lot more blue. So we took a lot of phthalo blue, a lot of ultramarine blue, mix that together and then added some more black just to create sort of a darker blue. This is kind of my tree color right here. And all I did for that was just take some yellow, a hint of red. So kind of a yellow ochre color, an Indian yellow color, uh, yellowish orange. And then I just added gray. So I just took white and black, mixed it together, added some gray to that, and it kind of produced this result. And then over here, I just took some black, mixed some blue to that. So we got a really dark, rich, sort of a bluish colored black. Now, a lot of these colors are really irrelevant. You know, I, I think a painting does not have to use these specific colors to come out great. So I think whatever version of these colors you mix is gonna look really good. So just really simplify this down as a light blue, a darker blue, sort of a, a grayish yellow, just gray and yellow basically together, and then just a really dark color here, blue and black. And that's pretty much all we need. So I think I'll probably start with this one inch flat brush. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and do that. And what I'm gonna do is just pick up some of that lighter blue color. This is gonna be our sky color. And I'm focusing on sort of a, a, a technique here today where we're gonna worry about the blocks of color, the values of color first, not worry about the details. So let's work on the values the composition, and then we'll get into some of the, the details further on if we need it. So let's just keep it kind of simple. So we're gonna start with this blue color here, and I'm just gonna go over a lot of the sky with this blue color. Okay. 
Okay, now when we get further up in the sky, I'll probably end up just taking some of this darker blue, mixing that in. We want that sky to darken up as we get closer to the edges of the, the painting, which, which is just sort of going to draw the eye towards the center, which is kind of what we're after. I got a question about composition the other day, and they were referring to a lot of people teach that you want to have the focus in like the lower third of a painting or, you know, the, high, the upper third of a painting, never in the center. And my belief on that is just paint what you love. I don't really think into anything that what we're, we are or aren't supposed to do. You're going to find that as long as I'm happy, that's how the painting should be. So, you know, I really encourage you guys to just follow your heart. Don't, don't listen to all the, the things that people have to say. It's really important to me anyways. So, okay. So the, yeah, that's actually a really nice look, looking sky right now. We're probably going to take some lighter blue color. Try to wash out some of that darker blue here. Just get that in. Okay, cool. Looking good. Let's take a smaller brush and I'm going to pick up one of my favorite round blender brushes. I'm going to take some white. Real simple. I'm just going to start sketching in the ideas for some clouds. I want to know where they're going to be. Again, I'm not going to be super concerned with the specifics of these clouds right now. I just want, I want them to exist somewhere here. So we're going to start by just taking some white. It's actually pretty simple. Probably just take a little bit of black with that and just kind of create an off white. We don't want everything to be white. A little brighter has a little too dark. So just add more white to the mixture. It's going to mix in with some of that blue. That blue hasn't dried yet, which is okay. Again, it's just giving us the template, the idea for what we're after. A little more gray, and we're going to kind of put that down low here. Give that cloud some depth. Yeah, I mean, look how easy that is. And, you know, we have, we've got some pretty good looking clouds starting to show up. Really no effort. I like this brush. Okay, cool. That, that, let's just leave it at that. Now I'm going to pick up, this is an angled brush. Raphael angle brush. I'll have it in the description as well. Uh, so it's just a flat brush with an angle, a uh, little more control with this brush. So we're going to pick up this darker blue, touch of water. I'm just using water at the moment. I got a question about using glazing medium. I was using some glazing medium and some other paintings. And the reason for that is I've been using some other paints that dry slower. Uh, that glazing medium sort of speeds up that dry time for me. Kind of seals the layer of paint that I'm working on. So I, it's not necessary. I'll just use it from time to time. Glazing medium is all right, though. It, if you like using a medium, again, I think you should just do what you like to do. Neighbor just started the car. I don't know if you can hear that. It's pretty loud. All right. So I'm painting the mountains right now. I'm just taking that darker blue and I'm just filling it in. You know, so I'm not worried about anything, just getting some darker color mixed in there. And what I probably want to do is actually take that darker blue and just add some more black and add some more ultramarine to this. We want to create a darker mixture for some of those mountains that are closer 
to the viewer, which would be these ones right off to the right here. It's not a lot darker, but it's a little bit darker. I think you'll notice it once I'm finished with this. So we're going to, you know, I'm trying to work pretty quick. Try not to think too much. Not sure what you have to do to that car to get it going, but still revving it. Okay, so I've got some pretty thick paint and I'm just trying to manipulate it as best I can to get the, the desired result. So really just getting it on there. We're not we just want to comp we want to fill the canvas as quick as possible right now. You know, so it's just a little bit darker, tiny bit darker. All right, looking pretty good. Now we're actually going to take some more, probably some phthalo blue and some black. Ultramarine blue as well? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Okay, so we're going to take that edge, try to divide that up here so you can see the difference. Yep, a little bit darker, looking good. Okay, now we're going to get into some areas with some more tree detail to the right. The way I'm going to go about that is not worrying about those tree details yet. I'm going to worry about the overall color of the area. So that's going to be that kind of that greenish grayish color that I mixed here. I'm just getting a few spots of this blue added before I switch colors. This is actually looking really nice. I already love this painting. Okay, a little there. Got some shadows in the rocks up high. Just getting a foundation for those shadows. All right. Really, you know, you know just look how quick I'm working it, and just don't think about it. Just, just do it. Okay. Looking good. So we're going to switch the colors. Have you guys noticed yet that I've had lots of coffee this morning? Got a lot of energy. All right. So let's get into the tree color. Look at those nice trees going on. So much detail. So I just really want you guys to realize that you don't have to add all this detail. Just don't overwhelm yourself so quick. The first layer of paint should always just be, it should be really relaxing is what it should be when you're putting it on there. So that's what I want you to think about most. Just make sure that you're feeling relaxed. Make sure you're just going with the flow, just getting the paint on there filling in the canvas. You want to get rid of all that white. If you like to tone your canvas, you want to get rid of all that color that you added first. I'm actually going to mix the blue with this color right here and I'm just going to kind of blend that together and you see how that sort of blends those blues into the the greens pretty nicely. Super easy. Okay, now we're going to actually take some more blue. Just mix in on the fly here. A little bit of black. Let me pull the black from over here. And you can see that green starting to mix in there because I got it on my brush still. So now we're going to try to create sort of a highlighted area kind of in the middle here, and then it's going to get a little bit more dull as we move away from that.
or more blue as we move away from that either way. Yeah, just really don't worry about specifics, just keep on moving. Use my finger, just kind of blend that out. Got a little bit rough. As it starts to tack up, it starts to, to blend more difficultly. I don't know if that's the right way to say it. It starts to become harder to blend. Okay. Looking good. I like it. I'm going to wash the brush. My cups of water over here. All right. Now, we're going to move to sort of the rock color, which I'm just going to kind of mix on the fly here. So I'm going to take some white, some red, got some black mixed in there even. I'm going to take some yellow. Yeah, like, I, I don't know, that's probably pretty good. This is first and foremost, just why not just fill in this whole area with this color? All right. Looking good. Okay, now we need a little bit of variance in that. So I'm gonna take some blue, I'm gonna mix some blue with that color, but I'm probably gonna want some more red as I darken that down. So then we kind of get kind of an in-between here, sort of a pinkish magenta, just a good shadow color. We're losing some of our our blue up there. That's okay. Take some more blue. Probably just add some black. I'm looking for a color. Yeah, probably about right there. And again, I kind of want to blend all of this together roughly. Not very precisely. Again, a lot of these details can come later. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'll probably just take, I got like a darker blue mixing over here. Just try to redefine some of these areas that I had of some blue. Take some red, I'm trying to get that darker shadow color again, kind of right in here. Maybe a little more red. Yeah. So something like that. And just kind of add that down low. So we're creating a little bit of texture here, I guess. And then I'm going to continue with that. And I'm going to add just some of that through here. Okay. It's already looking really nice. Bear with me if you can't see it yet. Okay, I want to take some darker blue. So if you don't have ultramarine blue, you can almost just take some phthalo blue and red. Mix that together and you're going to get closer to that color.
I failed. I'm just going to cheat, grab some ultramarine blue. A little bit more black. Looking for that dark blue again. Okay. So. Trying to add some of this back in, some of this blue. Not bad. I'll kind of blend some of that out. Okay. Yeah, pretty good. Not bad at all. I'm going to just keep that paint on the brush. I'm just going to mix in some of this yellowish gray. I'm going to add some black to that, a little more yellow. Kind of a darker green. Have some trees. So I'm just kind of using the top of that brush, that angled brush. Just checking the time, make sure my camera doesn't shut off on me. So then as we move to the left, it should start to appear a little bit darker than what I've got on there, which it does. I think I got the right color then. Okay. I'm going to kind of just blend some of that color downwards. Then I'm going to take, I'm actually going to need to wash my brush for this one. I'm going to take some of that black that we mixed. I'm just going to fan it upwards into that color. Cover that up. Oop. Now oh, we're only worried about up top. Take some more of this kind of yellow color, and I just want to sort of, in a downward motion, pat this in between color on, and it's going to start to blend these two colors together. And it's going to start looking like trees. Pretty easy, actually. Very easy. So this is just kind of giving us the foundation for that. Actually, it's looking <laughs> pretty well. Just that alone. I like these angled brushes. It's you know, it's it's not a dagger brush. It's kind of in between. Look how nice that does. I mean, right there, that almost looks like some pretty good trees in itself. So we're going to take some blue, mix in some blue. We're going to lighten this up a bit, a little more ultramarine blue. 
And we don't want this to be like completely black. So over to the right here, we're just gonna add kind of some blue into this, a little more. Come later too, if we don't like it. So we wanna resist getting that to be too dark We want that atmosphere to appear, which is going to be kind of that blue color. Little pine trees. Really don't need to do any more detail when it comes to pine trees than this. Okay, that's looking pretty good. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and take this darker color. I'm actually going to mix some blue. We want it to be lighter now. This is going to be the reflection in the water. So we're lightening up this black color with some blue. Probably some white in there as well. Now I don't know exactly where this line is going to be yet. And upwards and downward motion, mainly downward, I guess. We're just going to start pulling that down creating the beginnings of a reflection in the water. We're gonna have to use our T-square and kind of straighten that out a bit. But this is a good start. My camera is probably gonna run out of battery any second here. We're still going, we're good. Okay, I'm actually going to pick up some of this green yellow color. I'm just going to start looking at how can I cover the canvas totally. I'm just going to add that right there, just get that covered. And then I'll probably just take, I'll probably just make that a bit lighter. And there's going to be some areas with some shoreline right here. figure out this left part here. I'm thinking about a, a tree, but maybe not now. It's actually looking decent. A little bit of orange green. Probably want that to be even darker, a little more red too. I don't know, something like that. So just up and down little water, just kind of making a reflection, real simple reflection. Covering that up. Okay, we're gonna take some blue Real rough, just not worried about it right now. Just want to get this covered. A little more blue in the center. A little more water, keep that flowing. And I 
we're done. We've got a blocked in painting. So this painting's blocked in. I'm going to let it dry just a little bit and then we're just going to kind of move on and just go over it again with kind of the next layer of detail. So I'm going to give it maybe 20, 15, 20, 30 minutes. I've got actually one area in particular that I'm looking at right here that I'm like, oh, I actually didn't cover that. It's all right, that's pretty good. So we got a blocked in painting and come back in just a few. All right, I've let this dry and I'm thinking about the next step, what I'm gonna do here. So I think the first thing I wanna do is straighten out the line that I have here. So I'm gonna have to get a decently straight line where the shore is just so it doesn't look crooked. Just take my pencil. I'm just going to go right over the top of that. Just make sure I got a nice line. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. I'm going to switch to a dagger brush. Get it cleaned off with some water here. And I'm going to start with some snow in the background. So I'm going to have to get some more paint. Some of this has kind of dried on me. I'm going to take a little bit of that blue add it to my white. I think we might be picking up some of that green. Try it over here instead. Okay, so what I'm gonna start looking for is where I can get some snow on these distant mountains. So painting some glacier bowls in the background. And this texture doesn't have to be perfect in any way. I think as long as you kind of have the, the angles, the directions of these textures, it's going to look pretty good. So from here on out, it's just going to be a process of just looking for the right texture and doing my best to get that on there. And I think a lot of it can be kind of manipulated into just however it works best for myself. I don't think I have to follow any particular blueprint. Gonna continue with that color. I'm going to take 
some pure white here. Couple patches of snow there. Yeah, so really, you know, it's not not perfect in any way. It's just kind of going with the flow. Things can be changed as well. It doesn't have to be. I don't have to leave it this way. I can add more dark blue. I can add more white. I can take some white away. Got options here. So I think the important thing is just kind of keep moving. And I think things will come later with time. Okay, pretty easy. So I'm just kind of using this brush to create some different looking lines and textures. I think the more patterns that I can add of snow patches, the cooler it's gonna look, just, just gives little things to look at. So another thing we can do is basically just take the white that I already have on my brush a little bit of black as well kind of mix these together a little more black it's kind of like a gray blue that's slightly lighter than what's already on there and I'm probably just darken that down a bit Just kind of create some underlying tones as well. Take some more ultramarine. I want that to be even darker. Ultramarine and black mixed together. Okay, so that's a bit darker there. Slightly more. I think that's about it. So now this should be just dark enough to where we can add some subtleties. You know, it would probably make more sense to go about this particular part prior to adding the snow patches doesn't necessarily matter though. It you'd probably make it easier on yourself, but ah, things just kind of come up as I work. So it's just how we learn. Don't get down on yourself for going about it the wrong way. I'm going to cover up a little bit of white right here, just with some outlying textures, kind of right on the edge there. Just create some interesting, I think if we kind of make the edges of some of these mountains a bit more interesting, that can add some realism. Just little details like that can help bring things together. And so we can just take the same color that I have and look at, we can just start breaking apart those white patches or alter them in a different way if we need to.
Okay. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to take some more. Some more white. I'm going to work on making this area just a little more intricate. Okay, that's not bad. I think I'm, I'm seeing something I can add here, and this is just, you'll be willing to alter what you're working on. One thing I noticed is right here, we got some brown. I think I'd like that to be blue right on this edge. So I can just add that blue, just put some back on the brush, just paint right back over the top and clean up that line of that mountain. I think that's gonna help me portray these distant ridges a bit better. Right. That's looking pretty good. I think I can get away with a little bit more of that blue, perhaps just right up top here. Have a more of a point right there and then just adding a little bit of outline to that hill. That ridge back there. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now I think the next thing to do is essentially kind of take the same color that I'm using that I'm working on, make it a bit darker because as we move closer to the foreground, things tend to get darker. And I'm gonna add some water with this color. We just took some ultramarine blue and black. We added it to kind of that blue mixture of those distant mountains. And I'm gonna start looking for some areas up in here where I can add this texture. I think I'll just go ahead and start with up top. Now I'm just looking, like, I don't wanna get too finicky with some of these textures. I wanna just, to get the texture on there. And I think that's the more important thing is just to kind of keep moving, just get different textures laid on, even if you're not sure about them. So I tend to move really quick through here, just trying to keep focus on what's really important. You know, rocks can change. If, if you're following a reference photo for a mountain and you're looking at the cracks in the rocks, the shadows, things like that, just try to get the general idea. Don't stress on the minor specifics. If you get them in the right areas and you kind of layer the colors correct, correctly, it's, it's gonna look pretty darn good. I think the general idea of the texture is more important than the actual placement and the execution of it. A little more water, just keep that paint flowing. All right, looking good. Now I'll go back over the top with some of those other colors and might lose some of this that I'm doing right now, but hey, it's a step closer, right? So that's kind of why I'm not really paying too close attention with what I'm doing. I'm just moving, moving quick. I think that's the key. Go up here, 
some of those textures on. Looking good. Okay, now, now I think it's time to just not get ahead of myself and maybe switch to one of those other colors. And so those other colors might be this green, actually. And I think I could add some blue to this. So I'm just gonna mix those colors together. Maybe a little bit more blue. Yeah, just dulling that back, trying to make it match what's on there. Okay, so we've got some trees that are going to be way up high up here, and we're not really going to see. I think I could get, I want to get some more blue in there. Maybe like actually this color that I've got over here on this side. Add some white to it. Okay, something like that, possibly. Yeah, so that doesn't just it just doesn't stick out as much. And again, I'm not paying close attention to specifics of everything up here but I want to get this color kind of scattered on I think it's just gonna help with the overall feel and that's really it for right now so I'm gonna wash that and then what I'm gonna do is take some blue and let's see if we can still get some of this red. It's starting to dry on me, but we still can grab some up here. Pull the top layer off. So we're gonna make some red and blue together. It's gonna give us a little bit of a violet color, but a very off violet color. And then I actually am probably gonna take some yellow and add that to the mix along with some red, essentially adding some orange to the mix. Okay, a little more blue, a little bit of water. I think we can get away with just more white and possibly touch more orange. I think that's pretty close. Okay, so add some more water to that. And I'm just gonna get some of this texture on here. This is gonna start to break apart some of that color, that warm sunlight color on the rock. I also use this to kind of cover up some of the blue if, if I feel like I went too far with some of that. Take some ultramarine blue, a little bit of red, just kind of add that to the mix. So what I want to do right now is sort of start darkening that down as we get closer to those shadows. Yep. Yep, I think that's the color right there. I'm gonna make sure that's not too strong, so I'm gonna add some of that blue back in there. Just gonna lighten that up. Yeah, 
There's a little bit too much red, possibly. A little bit more water. Using the side of the brush, just dragging that texture on. So as a general rule of thumb, I like to always go with kind of like the shadow, the bait, the darkest color in a given area. So I'd probably like rather go with this color I'm using now earlier on. But, I don't know, I just kind of felt like doing it some random way today. I think that's important, like I said before, and just trying different things. How are you going to find the next thing for you if you're not willing to try something new? It's kind of my philosophy, so always trying something new. It's kind of why I do these quicker paintings rather than spending dozens of hours you know just spend a few hours in a day produce something make yourself feel good kind of a warm-up we all got to take reps you can't just go out and play the game got to practice more importantly we got to learn and that means experiment Okay, that's looking not too shabby. I take take some red and yellow. Get a nice orange over here. Grab some white. A little more yellow. Pick up some of that black. Just to darken it down. A little bit more red. All right, so now I'm going to get some highlights back on there. So again, kind of going back the other way, I'm using kind of the back side of this dagger brush and just dragging that down, lifting it up at the same time. So dragging it down, lifting it up, and just kind of swiping and Lifting off that texture. Lifting off the brush to create that texture. And I want to start eliminating some of this darker blue. You know, it just doesn't feel 100% to me, which usually just kind of indicates some of the texture is not right. But you don't have to take it that far to get a good result. Again, I think it, it's really good to just focus on the idea of the texture, not, you know, following the texture deliberately. A little more water. Start thinking about some other areas where might be some rocks protruding upward.
Look at how just adding some of that texture can make a big difference in the overall feel of the, the painting, maybe as, as far in terms of realism and I don't know, just kind of like eye candy. The more texture you have when you're after something like this, kind of the better because there are so many textures on the landscape. And let the brush, let the brush do its magic as well. Don't feel like you got to create every texture. Kind of let that brush work for you. Just, just drag that brush different ways, different circles, up, down, roll it, side to side, lift it up. And it's going to start doing some things that you want it to do automatically. Okay, I think I can just kind of mix some of these colors together. A little bit more red. So this is kind of an in-between. We're going to grab some water with that. Purple, some of this purple color, add some red, kind of get an in-between. And then I'm going to kind of go crazy up top here. And just kind of fan the texture Fade that texture up into the shadows with little itty bitty textures just kind of dissipating up into here. See how that starts to blend it all together? You know, even just dulling down some of these darker blues. Just dragging little bits of texture. Sometimes that texture doesn't even have to be right. It just has to be the right color. And if you've got it in the area, it you know makes us perceive, it gives our eyes the perception of, of that, that thing being there, whatever it is that you're trying to paint. Just, you just get that color in there somewhat accurately. You're in a good place. the theme of the day. I feel like this is just a little bit too light or too dark, I mean, so I want to lighten it. So just added some color over the top and look at, I'm just going to kind of push some of that away. And just kind of lighten that up. So it just leaves a little bit of paint down there. Not bad. Okay, so I've just taken some black ultramarine blue and then I mixed it with this color here, just get kind of a darker blue. And I'm thinking about just how to kind of fine tune what I'm doing here. Get a little bit more aggressive with some of the textures that I'm after. Thinking about bringing this up a little bit higher, just kind of looking at some of my composition. Increasing the strength of some of these shadows. Sometimes you gotta start stepping back and looking at this. Okay, so here's where maybe some glazing medium can come in handy. So I'm just gonna add it to my palette right here and I'm gonna pick some of that up. And I'm gonna add it to this mixture so this becomes a transparent mixture then. just one thing that I've started to in, started to enjoy using. So watch as this goes on. It goes on as a glaze 
which is why it's called glazing medium, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, it actually produces a really nice result. I, I didn't use this kind of stuff for the longest time, but uh, the handling of it, I do kind of like it. It starts to tack up really quick, so you got to move fairly fast. But it actually does produce a nice glaze. I don't know why I've avoided it for so long, but... So now I can just kind of add these glazes over the top and start to create some dramatic effects. I can dull certain areas, add more color, whatever I want. And like one of the things I'm noticing in, in this as I'm working on it, just right across and then pull it down. Smooth it out a little bit. One of the things I'm noticing is, I believe that some of this rock, I'm gonna get a bit more of this. I wanna alter this right here. It's kind of bugging me out. I don't like it. One of the things that's kind of bugging me out, well, actually, I was thinking maybe it was a little bit too pink, but I think actually, once I start glazing on that blue, it starts to turn it a little bit more greenish, a little bit more yellowish. And that actually looks about right, so that's pretty good. What I can continue doing with this glaze, however, is altering kind of the highlight of the trees. So now I'm gonna to move to kind of the trees. Now I'm just kind of leaving everything as I go and I'm moving along to the next step. And what I'm thinking about is getting the tones right before I add the texture of the trees. So there's gonna be some certain areas through here where we're going to have, I think, basically some, some valleys running through. And I wanna look, I wanna just kinda portray those shadows before I add the actual texture of the trees. So I want them to be kind of soft. Remember, this is just to get me started. So just glazing over the top. Okay, it's looking pretty good. You know what I did forget about up top there? Pick up some of that green, just mix it in to this blue that I got. And just kind of blend in that darker color I added way up top. I'm gonna to leave it for just a minute and let this all dry. I'm just kind of letting all that dry up top because I will add some snow to that. I'm just not quite ready to do it yet. Okay, looking pretty good. Now, let's start thinking about these trees and how I'm going to do that. I'm probably going to need, I'm running out of it, it's drying out on me. I'm probably going to need some blue, some darker blue, kind of like what I already have here. I'm going to add some glazing medium to it. I think I can get away with some more ultramarine blue, something like that. Now I wanna start creating the idea of, 
I want to start creating the idea of shadows in these trees. So this is going to be a longer process. And I, I need to figure out how to do it. And I can already tell I'm not really going to like the dagger brush for this. So I'm going to kind of push this paint to the side. I'm going to pick up a round brush, I believe. Actually, probably go with like a, I think this is a new brush, like a smaller filbert. Let's see if the smaller filbert would work for me. Yeah, I think so. I want to create little pine tree shapes. I don't think that's even the right brush either. Something with more of a point. That's almost like a little flat brush. Maybe if I get out. Yeah, this is a small filbert brush right here. Okay, I'm gonna, I think I'm probably gonna stick with this filbert brush here. Even that larger angle brush might give me something similar to what I'm looking for. Let's try that angle brush I was using, even though it's a big brush, it does have that nice angle. No, it's just not gonna work for me. I can try a round brush. Boy, I'm not liking any of that. I'm just gonna go back. Stick to my my dagger brush. Just try that. Let's see if I can't get get it to work for me. I got a different one here. Yeah, it might work a little better. So I'm gonna start creating the tree texture through here and it's kind of a lengthy process. I don't really wanna shortcut it. to start kind of creating my own new mixture of color here. I'm running out of that other one. Okay. So I'll just kind of start up top and I'm gonna to work my way through this painting. So I've got the angle of it kind of on the back side of this brush and I'm swiping downwards at the canvas with it. Again, you know, I get picky about the texture and how it looks, but it doesn't have to be Perfect, like I said before. So I'm going to try to create those little valleys. Try to increase that effect a little bit.
So picking up quite a bit of paint on the brush itself. So I'm already realizing it's just, it's really tough to create this small texture in one go around. So I'm gonna have to go back over the top, you know, and basically paint on the highlights over the top of it and just sort of, sort of change what I'm doing, change the appearance of just this one layer. It's just really hard to do it in one pass. So, I'm starting to loosen up now. I'm just going quicker, not worried about it. Again, I want this texture to show up way back. As far as you can see, on this hill anyways, not so much on those distant mountains. That's a little bit too far for texture. Kind of the only way, there's no real way, there's no real shortcut to good texture. I'm gonna say that a lot, texture, because it's just so important for everything. That's really all anything is. Don't overwhelm yourself. I've probably said it in the past. Don't overwhelm yourself with what an object is. It's just a texture like everything else. A smooth blend is just a smooth texture. A sea of pine trees is just a little rough, tiny... little rough composite of tiny textures. How about that? Keep making some more of that color. Got some white. And black. really quite easy. And when we study these textures, the, the texture that I'm laying on now, and especially up close, it's not going to appear to be a whole lot, but I think in the grand scheme of things, it's going to end up working for us because there's going to be so much going on all together in the painting that really don't focus on it in the finished painting. Our eyes aren't going to focus on that. It's going to focus on everything else that's beautiful about the painting. So again, just keep on keeping on. Continuing to add water into the paint, a little bit of medium perhaps, just kind of keep it flowing right. I'm 
trying to make these textures lower a little bit bigger just to make them appear closer. Yeah, I can see some flaws that's go that are going on in this, but it's okay. This texture is important. We need this color on the canvas, and there's kind of just no way around it. You got to just get started somewhere. So I'm just doing my best to get that on there. Look what we can do in such a short time. Really not that long into this and we've got a nice looking painting so far. And just kind of spread that texture a little bit further back here. Add some water, keep it flowing. Keep that moisture in there. Not too much, but you want to keep it in there. It'll dry out pretty quick. Okay, it's looking good. What I'm gonna do now is take some of this lighter tree color. I think what I'm gonna need to do is add some white and yellow to this. Probably some, some red if I can still get some of that. A little bit more black back in, into that. I want to create... That's probably pretty close, actually. I want to create kind of an orangish, orangish tone in this. At some point, I want to be a little bit more careful. So I'm gonna go back over this texture I added, and I'm gonna start adding uh, 
the highlights of these trees, just, it's going to start covering up some of these shadows. And then all of a sudden these shadows, as they begin to disappear, will start to look a little bit more realistic. You just got a little bit too much shadow on there, but that's good because like I said before, I like getting the, the, the darkest color on there first. And then kind of going back over the top. And adding some highlight texture. And so as I work on this part, I do want to be more careful because these trees are going to, these highlights are going to give the appearance of our trees and I want that to look good. There, you see how that texture right there looks a whole lot better? Significantly better. So this kind of becomes a pretty good long process of adding highlights now. But all these colors will work together. Now, what I'm not afraid of doing is making the highlights too bright because I can glaze those down, remember? We can darken things, we can alter the color without really having to do the work again. Glazing gives us a lot of elbow room in making mistakes. So I'm going to add some more blue. Just start darkening it down slightly. Little itty bitty trees back here. Seems obsessive, but I'm having fun with it. And I think that's kind of what you have to ask yourself. What do you enjoy most? That's really what's most important. It goes back to just not listening to other voices around you. What is your own voice telling you? Are you enjoying painting little trees? Well, then I say you paint little trees as many as you can. But if you enjoy the process of making things look more impressionistic, less detailed. I think that's probably the right way to do it then for you. Abstract, I kind of feel the same way. It all has a place. That just depends on the individual. bit more blue if I can just kind of pull a little bit more blue out of that add a little bit of black try to darken this down slightly that's it's 
probably about right. And I'm going to start adding the highlights going way back. Trying to make them smaller as I go further back. Continuing to add water to my mixture of paint so it doesn't dry out completely. I'm not increasing the amount of water in my paint. I'm just bringing it back into the mixture so it doesn't dry out. So I'm trying to maintain the amount that's in there because it does evaporate out of there quick. Lots of trees, all done with a dagger brush. I had several people comment that it's not dagger brush, it's dagger brush. Or however, it's just my accent dagger. I say bag too. I don't say bag, I say bag. Can I get a bag with that? Come on, where are my Minnesotans? I know there's some understanding souls out there that sympathize with my foolish accent. How about a bag with that, eh? Oh yeah, you bet. All right, we're getting there. It's getting close. Try to make that paint last a little bit longer. So I get these last textures in. Not bad, looking good. Okay. Let's go ahead and just wash that brush. Perhaps work on some of that snow that I talked about. Just need some white. And we've got a round brush this time. Just to create some really fine tuned small textures. I want to make it appear like we got little itty bitty trees up top here. And we can see through those trees to the snow on the ground. So this miniature texture is kind of what I was talking about, really adds to the painting, to the realism, whatever you're after.
All right, now we're going to add some blue. I'm going to try to anyways, if I can find some of it. Add some blue to this. There we go. A little bit more. I'm going to look like this is a little shoot of snow coming down through here. And then add some breaks in it. Looks like we're getting into the trees. Then it all kind of flows down to this one stream of snow. That's looking pretty good. There's some random spots of snow. Looking good. Okay, I'm gonna wash my water, take a break, come back in just a second. All right, so I've flipped around my palette a little bit and I'm gonna work on tweaking some of the color in these trees now. So what I'm looking for is a, a little bit more color, a little more orange perhaps. That might be too much orange. Too much white, that's a process here, I guess. <laughs> All right, uh, we're getting closer. Okay, so I'm probably looking for something around that, which you can see is quite different uh, than the, the color I had. I believe the other color was probably somewhere right in here. So we got a little more color yeah, I think that should probably do. And I'm just going to intensify some of these highlights. Adding a little water. So you can see how this texture is starting to work. At first it kind of looked sloppy, especially when I was just adding the, the shadow, the shadow colors. But once you start adding the highlights over the top, you realize just how easy it is to create something like a, th a thick forest, forested hillside which seems kind of daunting, overwhelming, perhaps. Pretty easy. Now you can start to see some of those lines of shadows kind of represent some low areas. T 
tedious process. Totally worth it, I think, though. Just about there. Okay, we're we're looking pretty good right now. I think I could have could have left a little more shadows some of those areas. I might try to just add some of those back real quick. Yeah, just a few right through here. A little bit better. I'm going to leave it for now. And I'm going to move to some of these trees. In front, I'm going to take some black and yellow, mix it in here. Probably just stick with like, probably just that color right there and just see what that does. A little bit more, a little bit more light. So these trees are going to be somewhat more distinguished. We're just going to be able to see a little bit more of them. So add just some slight texture to these trees, slight more, a little more branches perhaps. Just put a little more effort into each tree, I guess.
That's looking pretty good. I'm just swiping this with a downward motion. And then I'm kind of going side to side just a little bit just to add with some branch texture. I feel like I probably want to add some black and blue. Get a darker version of this and create some trees that are more in the the shadows down here. Just a few highlight few highlighted trees. So kind of down, down, and then side, 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 down, side, side, side. And create some trees that, that look pretty good. Down, little side motion. Not bad. Okay, we're getting there. A lot of silence right there. Almost done. With these trees anyways. Okay, I feel like I can pick up some of that highlight, that, that brighter color again. And a few brighter, brighter trees. pick up some yellow and white. I want to go even brighter for a couple of these just to give the appearance of maybe a little bit more sunlight coming through just right there through the top.
little black, little yellow, little red. Just to lighten up some of these cracks in between. A little bit darker version of what I have on here. Couple trees over here. And I'm going to take some white and some blue. A little bit of yellow in that. And I'm going to try create kind of a shoreline effect right here. Okay. Take some black and some blue. And I want to create A little more shoreline over on this side. Okay. Not bad. And now I'm going to move to the reflection. And I'm probably going to start with a fresh palette for that. So I'm going to clean up my palette, kind of transfer this, and we'll get into the reflection in the water. Okay, I've cleaned up the palette. I've got some brand new colors on here, just the same ones, black, white, ultramarine blue, cad yellow, cad red, and then I've got some glazing medium just because I may do a little bit of glazing. I'm going to pick up some water and I'm switching to this filbert brush. So we're going to have to mix up those colors that I already had. I'll just start with this dark blue. So I'm going to mix ultramarine blue with black. And I'm wondering if that's going to be too dark. I'm gonna, I did pick up some white before, so I'm going to do that. That might be what I was looking for. I think it is. Okay. Now, just like we did the mountain, I'm going to go through... I like this. I'm starting to use more glazing medium, I guess. It does blend nicely for just certain things. So I'm going to get this dark color scrubbed on. And that filler brush just allows me to have a little bit of control with the edges of my lines. It's not super round like the other brush I want to use right now, which is my round blender brush. And with the round blender brush, I'm going to pick up some blue now. A little more white. And 
and in an upward and downward motion, I'm going to start to blend this dark color downwards towards a lighter color, lighter blue. Only to about right there. Then I'm going to take some more white and I'm going to add it to the mix. And this will be the color that exists all the way down low here. Scrub it in and then just kind of fan it upwards. Look how nice of a job that blender brush does. Round Blender made a video on it. I really like it. There's a few brushes that I'm, I'm willing to make a video on if I really find that they change things for me. This is one of them. Just look how nice that looks now. Then I'm going to pick up some yellow with a touch of red. I'm actually going to get rid of that brush and I'm going to pick up a smaller version of that. S small round blender brush. I think this is the number six size. I'm going to mix some yellow, red, and then basically just add gray to that, black and white. And I think I got too much white in that. I'm just going to add black and darken it down. Probably about right there. Now I'm going to take, I think you can see this right here, paper towel, and I'm just going to get most of that paint off of there. Maybe even just dip it back into the glazing medium. We just want to glaze on some of this color. Now I'm going to look for some of those areas up above that have some trees kind of protruding down into the shadows. And I'm going to try to match that underneath. I think I can get away with a little bit more white. It's just a little lighter color. Ooh, that's too green though. So we need to make that more gray. Don't make the mistake of oversaturating colors. More gray. Get the excess off. Still too light. Add black. It's tricky. That's about right. Just enough. We want it to stand out, but not too much. And it's tricky with acrylics because they do tend to dry a little bit darker than when they're wet. So watch out for that. There we go. So adding a few reflections to some of this dark area. I'm trying to move quick. It's not going quick right now. Not looking too bad. I'm going to add some dark to the shoreline over here. Okay. I think probably take that larger blender brush and I'm going to add a bit of orange and get some red and yellow together with some white. Add some black, a little more color. Get that moisture off of the brush, dab it on the napkin and then bring it over here. 
and just try to get some of this color that I have up top here into the reflection just so that we feel like we can kind of see it in there just slightly. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna wash that brush and I'm gonna switch to, I may just switch to kind of my go-to lately, which seems to be this dagger brush. I'm gonna pick up some white, ultramarine blue, some water. A little bit of black, not much. And I'm gonna start adding the reflection. Reflection time. Now this is super easy. So we've got kind of the base down of what we're after. Now just comes some details over the top and it's gonna look pretty good. So I'm trying to keep them, the textures as little horizontal lines. And when we go further up, we obviously want them to get smaller. And then when we get further down into the foreground, we want them to be a little bit bigger, so. Just using the edge and I'm almost just patting the brush directly straight down onto the canvas. And this will take several colors and layers of this. to make up what I think we'll perceive a, a good reflection, but we're basically just creating ripples in the water and we're using the color of the sky because of course the water, one of the basic questions for beginners that I'll ask them is what color is water? And I think a common answer to that at least would make sense in our brains would be, well, it's blue or perhaps green or brown, but say if we have clear water, well, the color is always whatever is behind it and that reflects onto the water. So when we think about what color is this water? Well, before we start adding the detail, the color would be whatever this color we have along the shore is. So this dark color, uh, shadow and then we've got a little bit of highlights which I added a few of those and then we've got kind of the colors up here that I'll add into here but then when we want to add ripples because the water is flowing backwards and breaking with each wave as that wave breaks it creates a different angle in the water so it's actually going to reflect things higher up in the sky so that's why we see things like the colors of the skies when we have ripples in the water that that water's not nice and flat going back it's curving and as it curves which with each little miniature wave going back, it might reflect just a bit of this white or just a bit of this darker blue up here. So I'm just drawing colors from up high now and using that for these riffles. So just tapping on the narrow edge of this brush onto the canvas. And 
then as we get further down, I'm pushing a little bit harder. I'm trying to make them a little bit bigger. A couple outliers as well. You can get rid of some too if we don't like them. You can always change things. But I think this is just a fun way to just get started with water, kind of learn about water. It's a relaxing way to do it. Again, we're not adding tons of details today. We are, but we aren't. Relaxing details. I'm going to call them relaxing details today. And then I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to kind of just add a swath of coverage right through there, just lighten up the center of all that. Mmm. Mmm. I like it already. A little more gray. Probably got a little bit of background noise going on now. If you're wondering if it if it did, I don't know, maybe you can't hear. Got some things running on in the background, some fans. Very carefully, I'm adding this detail. I don't want to make these lines. A couple of these lines are crooked and I don't like it. It really bothers me. Okay, so we're getting there. Couple way up there, way up high, really small. Couple other outliers over here. A little bit more fat. Couple random spots that are much wider, a couple imperfections, looks pretty good. I like this. Now comes the next phase. So I'm gonna wash the brush. And I'm gonna pick up some white. With a touch of yellow red together. All right, here we go. Adding some final highlights to the water. To get further up. One thing I gotta say I do like about acrylics is it allows me to sort of rest my hand on the painting as I work, because they do dry so quick. It's just convenient. Mm. Looking really good so far. Keep going. Can't stop, won't stop. So 
So this is essentially the color of the clouds that are up above, sort of reflecting right into some of those riffles or ripples, riffles or ripples, whatever you prefer. I want quite a few lower here. Blend, I'm blending some of these together, just really down low, not much else. Not elsewhere, very much, I should say. Okay, I'm gonna just kind of stand back, take a look at this. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I think the last thing I can do is take some glazing medium, grab some more blue. And add some blue to some of this area. Sort of limit that white, start to colorize some of that white. So I'm just kind of going over the top, some of those white areas. I want to add some blue back in this. I'm going to take some black and some blue, a lot of glazing medium and over the top of some of this up high, I'm gonna glaze on this color just to darken it down. So now we're darkening some of these reflections and we're pulling it back, keeping the focus back towards the center. Very nice. Last thing I'm gonna kinda of do, take some white, at least I think it's one of the last things, at least for this video, I always work a little more myself on the painting later on. But I'm gonna mix a little bit of orange there, mix it with white. A little bit of red. And that's like probably too much. So I just kind of keep going off to the side, adding a little bit of that color into some fresh white just to dilute that down. Dilute, dilute. And I want to brighten up some areas in the sky. So I've got another small round blender brush. This one's actually just the Artist Loft version of that scrumbler brush. Scrumbler is what they actually call it. Scrumbler. Use my finger, just kind of blend some of that out. Ooh, look how nice that blends. Super easy and relaxing. Look at that blend. Super easy. Ooh, painted the top of my easel. Now it's starting to get to a point where I've got just enough paint to add some color to the canvas, but I'm not covering it. So this is a transparent layer going on, sort of a glaze, but it's a lighter glaze. So it's like a scum layer, scumming it. I think that's what it's called. Just lightening up 
few things here. This is a little bit thicker paint. I want another cloud right here. Really looking nice. A little bit of color, a little bit of yellow going in. Not much though, I'm kind of wiping a lot of that off. Looking good. I like that. Now, I kind of want to add some trees over to the right here, but perhaps for this purpose, I'm just not, not going to. I'm not going to get that far into it. I'm actually going to take some black and white, some yellow. I'm going to kind of mix that tree color again. I'm going to add some of that tree color reflection in over here I need something to this part of the reflection it's just not quite there And I think I can add probably some blue and black to that. So of course we do have lots of blue and black up above there. Blue, dark blue. So I'm just taking this dagger brush again, just swiping this on. Sorry, I probably didn't mention, mention that I switched brushes again. Of course, we've got some white up high. Could probably, hmm, probably can't get away with. I think that white's too high up in the sky, up on that mountain. We just add some darker blue. More blue and black. Get that really dark. So I think I want to add a little bit more 
of this highlight color of the reflection in an area or two. So I kind of want to move this, these, these riffles further to the left as well. I want to emulate sort of the, the curve of this mountain. Yeah, somewhere right in there. So I can take some of that white, some lighter color, add some of that right through here. couple outliers again. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Take a little bit more white paint. Brighten up a couple of spots here. Probably brighten that up later with oil paint. It's really hard to get super bright colors with acrylics. Okay, I think we're fairly close. I probably could get away with some highlights on that rock face up there. A little bit of, a little bit of black. Red, too much red, kind of an orange color there, and then mix that with some white. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think I can take some dark blue color again and add a few minor cracks and details into this rock up here. So very th small and thin, little. Just about there, lightening up a couple areas.
Some darker blue again, just a few more down low here. A little more gray in this one, but just pulling that off. Blending that off to the left there. Yeah, and I mean, for the most part, that's looking good. I don't think there's a lot left. Just getting some darker color here. I think I could probably cover up a few spots of the reflection. Right through here, just make it look a little bit more like the curve of that mountain. All right, guys. Well, I think that wraps up the painting. I'm pretty happy with how this came out right now. I'm going to tentatively kind of call this finished. I may add some oil paints, uh, might saturate some of the colors a little bit later on, but I spray this with crystal clear gloss spray just to sort of bring out some of that, that depth, that saturation, you know, acrylics can get pretty matte when you're done painting. And so I just kind of restored that a little bit with that spray. So uh, it might look just slightly different, might pop at you a little bit more than what it did just a minute ago. But that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this today. Uh, one of the, probably the longest video I've done. I'm probably going to do some more. Let me know what you think. If you want more like this in the comments below. And if you have questions, make sure to ask as well in the comments below. I'm always happy to get to as many people as I can. So guys, again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out my free print giveaway. Like, follow, subscribe if you love this video. <laughs> Until next time, I'm out.